Horticulturally, the central highlands town of Harcourt is known to many as the apple-growing heartland of Victoria. But there's something else growing here from the very heart of the area. I was born here. My dad's Aboriginal, my mum isn't. I've moved one, two, three, four times in my life and I'm still in the same street. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Auntie Jewel, Jajawarong elder, lifelong Harcourt resident, Indigenous youth advocate and someone whose garden has grown beyond all expectations. When I retired from teaching, um, that was oh, a long time ago now, um, I was a little bit lost for a while and um, cooking, um, I started cooking and I started using a lot of bush ingredients or local ingredients or Australian ingredients in my cooking. And then I thought, oh, I might have a go at growing some of these. So I started off with the myrtles, um, the lemon, cinnamon, aniseed and curry, and because they're quite easy to grow and um, they're very easy to use. And then I sort of branched off into the pepperberries um, because the leaves and the berries are easy to use. And if her herb cupboard is anything to go by, she's had a lot of success with unusual Australian ingredients. Not to mention some of the surprising plants she's managed to grow in the challenging Harcourt climate. Here in Harcourt, in central Victoria, a lot of people um, believe we can't grow um, the tropical stuff, but here's proof that we can. So these are uh, lemon aspen, or they're also called white apple. This one's red, but it, it can also be called a black apple. These are desert limes. They, they obviously, by their name, grow in the desert. These ones are minya berries. These ones are muntries or mantari berries. These ones are the little bush tomatoes, dried bush tomatoes. Haven't been successful in growing these here. They grow in the centre of Australia, but I will persist. <laughs> I know as a gardener, because yeah. we, we love, you know, scientific names, but we also are learning to love local Aboriginal names for yes, plants. Yeah. Yep. There's a thirst for this knowledge. There is, and um, that's something that a lot of the names of the plants have dual meanings. And there's a plant down there, lemon myrtle, that you might know of. One of the names for it is giri giri, which actually means sour, and it also means urine. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> because it's sour. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> these are the little berries off the um, cherry ballard. I picked these yesterday. Now, the cherry ballard is a hemiparasitic yes. tree and um, it grows all around here. But we see this as a sacred tree or sacred leaves because the little tree has to attach to a big tree. Yep. And it's like children have to be taught or helped or looked after by the adults. It represents community in that you've got to work together. And in the spirit of working together, Auntie Julie took her knowledge of native plants and teamed up with the local Aboriginal community organisation, Nulderong, and they created the Murnong Mummers. Tell me about the Murnong Mummers. We wanted to have opportunity for some of the Aboriginal women to be employed in the area and there were two or three that, you know, were quite confident with cooking. So we thought, let's have a go, because I'd already been growing these plants and loved using the plants and things. So let's have a go at um, making some stuff using um, the native ingredients. There's probably up to about eight um, Aboriginal women now that have been employed with Moon on Mummers. So it became like a little catering business. Then COVID hit and no more catering. Then we thought, well, let's have a go at farmers markets because the Castlemaine farm mar farmers market was still running. And so what we've been doing there is some of the produce that we've created, which is um, like curries using a range of um, bush tucker ingredients in them, um, the salts, um, so making um, a whole range of salts. Murdong Mummers co-founder Melinda Harper believes that by creating delicious food with traditional ingredients, it also introduces the local people of Castlemaine to the local culture. Auntie Julie's a great educator, so it's sort of educating. That's a part of what we're doing. You've got food from all over the country here. What are some of the most popular? Um, I would say the um, ore, which is the Davison plum. Oh. That's the powder. That's a date ball, like a protein ball. So it's got a sweet and sour taste. I'll try a little yes, bit of that of powder. Mm. 
That is such, such a beautiful tart, but it's not intense. It's not making your tongue disappear. It's, it's really rounded and quite sweet. You're also giving people ideas of how to use some of the ingredients. Yeah, so, you know, uh, people love our wattle seed biscuits. Uh, so we thought, well, if people are going to buy wattle seed, we could give them the recipe. And, you know, just to, it's about education. And what goes well with a wattle seed biscuit? Well, naturally, it's a cup of tea courtesy of entrepreneur Charlie Dunnelly Lee, who's worked with Auntie Julie and the Murnong Mamas. What's this, Charlie? Um, this is the strawberry gum, lemon myrtle and native red back ginger wimmerick. Yum. Tell me a little bit about your business. Um, so my business is called Jar Wimmerick and we're an indigenous herbal loose leaf tea company. And we formed about a year ago when I did the Aunty Julie's Bush Tucker course. Do you reckon this is going to be something that gets bigger and bigger? Like, is it a business um, you want to pursue? Definitely. Um, it started out as a hobby, but now it's actually grown into a business. Like, we have a website now, and it. so I do think it could get bigger, but it's pretty exciting. <laughs> this is exactly what I want to see happening, is our young people, um, you know, being able to move into an area. And she's actually selling her teas in the USA now. You spoke before about wanting to encourage people to grow these, and this, this is a big part of your life, isn't it, now? Like... It is, and people are embracing it. And kids, if they learn about these things, then they look deeper when they're out in the forest or in the bush. And it's a lot of fun. 